Hi, my name is Nina Sanchez, and I'm doing my project on Nellie Bly. So, a little overview for Nellie Bly was she's the most famous American reporter of the 19th century, and her real name is actually Elizabeth Cochran, Cochran, and she began journalism in 1885. But back then, it was considered inappropriate for women to use their real names under their writing. So her editor, um, her editor chose the name Nellie Bly from a Stephen Foster song. But he unfortunately misspelled the name, and it was supposed to be N E L L Y, and she became N E L L I E. But she then began her career in 1885 in Pennsylvania, and she was working for the Pittsburgh Dispatch, to which she sent an angry letter to the editor because one of the stories that they did was titled, What Girls Are Good For? And according to the article, not much. So she wrote an angry letter and the editor was so impressed with her writing that they offered her a job. And at the time, women's contribution to a newspaper was generally confined to a woman's pages. And Nellie Bly was given a very rare opportunity to report white on wider issues. So in 1886 to 1887, she traveled for several months through Mexico, sending back reports on official corruption and the condition of the poor. And her articles actually angered Mexican officials and caused her to be um, expulsion, caused her expulsion from the country. So when she came back, she searched for um, a newspaper that would allow her to write on more serious topics. So she moved to New York City and she was finding it difficult to find jobs as a female reporter because it was such a male dominated field. And in 1887, she went to the New York, um, New York World Office and told the editor she wanted to write a story on the immigrant experience in the United States. And the editor shot that idea down and did not did not want her to write a story about that. And instead, he challenged her to investigate on New York's most um, notorious mental asylums, Blackwell's, which is now Roosevelt Island. And Bly not only accepted the challenge, but she went a step further and actually got herself admitted and she decided to fake a mental illness to get admissions to learn firsthand on how the patients were getting treated. And with her courage and very bold acts, she actually cemented her legacy as one of the most notable journalists in history. And she actually made a book about her whole experience in the asylum, and it was called 10 Days in the Madhouse. And it quickly made Bly one of the most famous journalists in the country. Her reporting on life in the asylum was one of the most shocking things to the public and led to increasing funding to improve conditions in the institution. And furthermore, her hands-on approach to reporting and developing into, um, developed into a practice now called investigative journalism. And Bly continued to produce um, regular exposés on New York's ills, such as corruption in the state um, legislature, unscrupulous employee employment agencies for domestic workers and black market for buying infants. Um, her straightforward approaches of the issues that she was writing about 
really captivated her audience and kept them wanting to read more and got her like even more stories to write about that she could have even imagined um Bly's successful career then reached many new heights in 1889 when she decided that she wanted to travel around the world after reading one of the most popular books at that time called Around the World in 80 Days. The New York World published daily updates on her life and her journey and the entire country actually followed her story and the trip only took her 72 days which set a new world record. Um, Bly then continued to publish influential pieces of journalism, including interviews with uh, prominent individuals like anarchist um, activist and writer Emma Goldman and um, socialist politician and labor organizer Eugene V. Debs. She also covered major stories like the March of Jacob Coxey's army um, on Washington, D.C., and the Pullman strike in Chicago, both of which were 1894 pro protests in favor of workers' rights. So that was really cool. And at the age of 30, Nellie Bly actually married a millionaire, Robert Seaman, and retired from journalism. Bly's husband then did die not that long after in 1903 and that left her in control of a massive ironclad um, manufacturing company and American Steel Barrel Company and her curiosity and independent spirit flourished with the business. She went on to patent several inventions related to oral manufacturing, which we still use to this day. And she also prioritized the welfare of employees, providing health benefit, healthcare benefits and recreational facilities. So as you can see, Nellie Bly was way more than what people knew her for, not just journalism. She also helped with um, interviewing very important people for protests and she had two companies that were left in her control and benefited many employees that worked for her. So that is why she should be taught more in history classes and just in school in general. So thank you.